In the penultimate chapter of the flight control series, we will understand the roll control features of the aircraft. Previously, we understood that the lift on the vertical stabilizer depends on three factors. Airspeed, angle of attack, and effective shape. Lift increases with an increase in airspeed, but the symmetrical aerofoil generates no lift when the angle of attack is zero. To generate lift, the airflow has to turn around the stabilizer, either due to a change in the angle of attack or by changing the effective shape with the help of the rudder. The wings of the aircraft are cambered aerofoils. A cambered aerofoil turns the airflow and generates lift, even if the angle of attack is zero. Increasing the angle of attack will further increase the lift. The lift on the wing is generated, on the opposite side of the airflow turn. The wing lift can also be increased, by increasing its surface area. The flaps and slats, when extended, travel downward, and change the effective shape. The increase in the camber, increases the airflow turn. They also increase, the size of the wing. This change in shape and size increases the lift. However, the flaps and slats, also increase the drag on the aerofoil. Therefore, their application varies, depending on the phase of flight. During the cruise phase, as the high airspeed contributes the desired lift, the flaps and slats stay retracted to minimize drag. There are seven slats, and one Kruger flap on each wing. Flap position 1, extends the leading edge devices to the sealed position, and changes the camber to increase the lift. In the sealed position, the trailing edge of the slats, is still in contact with the wing. There are two trailing edge flaps on each wing. Flap positions 5, 15, and 20 extend the trailing edge flaps. These positions increase lift, with a relatively small increase in drag. Ideal for the takeoff phase, where high lift and low drag conditions are required. When the flaps are in takeoff configuration, the flight computer deflects the flaperons downward. The drooping increases the lift in that section of the wing and improves takeoff performance. The flight computer also droops the ailerons. Flap position 25, first extends the slats into the gapped position. In this position, a gap is created between the wing and the slats. This allows some of the high pressure air from the lower surface of the wing to flow through the upper surface, increasing the stall margin in low speed flight conditions. Stall prevention features will be explained in the pitch control chapter of the series. The Kruger flap increases the camber but does not create a gap. Flap lever positions 25 and 30, extend the flaps further down. This gives the wing a sharp curvature, and increases both the lift and drag. These positions, are used for landing, as high drag helps reduce the aircraft's speed for approach, and high lift helps maintain the flight at low speed. The shape of the wing, can cause flow separation at the trailing edge, and lead to turbulent airflow. To prevent this, the outboard flaps are single-slotted. The high pressure air from the lower surface, travels to the upper surface, and provides laminar airflow. The inboard flaps are double slotted. When the flaps are set for landing, the flight computer, droops the flaperons further down. But does not use the ailerons, and moves them level. Speed brakes. The airflow above and below the wing, are both critical for the total lift produced. Any disruption of flow, will reduce the lift. Spoilers, disrupt the upper surface airflow. Each wing has 7 spoilers, 5 outboard and 2 inboard. The application of speed brakes on the ground is different from flight extension. The ground operation of the speed brakes, is used to dump the lift after touchdown. All spoilers deflect to their maximum position. This kills the lift, and allows the aircraft weight to dominate, ensuring proper application of landing gear brakes. The additional drag from the spoilers also helps to stop the aircraft. Deflecting all spoilers to their maximum in flight can be dangerous. Therefore, the flight computer restricts spoiler deflection in flight. Spoilers 5 and 10 are not used as speed brakes in flight. Outboard spoilers are restricted to a maximum 45 degree deflection, and inboard spoilers to 15 degrees. In flight, the speed brakes can be used to reduce airspeed. It can also help the aircraft descend for approach. Flight control operations of the wings can be divided into two categories, symmetrical and asymmetrical. 
In symmetrical operations, the control surfaces of both wings have similar movements, to ensure the lift is equal. In asymmetrical operation, the lift is varied, and this is required for roll control. Roll control, is the ability to control the aircraft, along the longitudinal axis. In a left roll, the aileron, and flaperon on the left wing are deflected upward. This reduces the camber, in those sections, and reduces the lift. Additionally, spoilers are deflected, to augment roll control. The right wing aileron and flaperon deflect down, increasing camber to increase lift. The unequal forces on the two wings create a net torque through the center of gravity, causing the left wing tip to go down and the right wing tip to go up. In a right roll, the right wing control surfaces deflect up and the left wing surfaces deflect down. Now let's understand lateral stability. Two wing design features help improve the aircraft's lateral stability, the dihedral angle and the swept back wings. In straight and level flight, the weight of the aircraft is equal to the lift. If a wind disturbance causes the aircraft to roll, it changes the lift direction. Now the lift is not just acting vertically, it is also acting horizontally. The horizontal component of the lift is an unopposed side force, due to which the aircraft will enter a side slip. Since the vertical part of the lift is not enough to counter the weight, the aircraft will also lose altitude. The relative wind is the airflow in the opposite direction of the aircraft's movement. Due to the dihedral angle, the downgoing wing has a greater angle of attack than the raised wing. As a result, the lift increases on the downgoing wing. The wing sweep also increases lateral stability. The lift is greater when the relative airflow is more perpendicular to the wing and reduces as the angle increases. The difference in lift attempts to recover the aircraft to its original attitude, but the momentum carries it further. Now the aircraft side slips in the opposite direction. Lift on the other wing increases, and in a series of decreasing oscillation, the aircraft returns to its stable position. This ability of the aircraft to recover, without any control surface input, is known as positive lateral stability. The Roll-Yaw Interrelation We have covered directional and lateral stability, but for simplification in both cases, we disregarded the secondary effects. A roll motion causes a yaw motion, and a yaw motion causes a roll motion. When the aircraft is disturbed in a roll, and enters a side slip, the relative wind hits the vertical stabilizer from the side. The airflow turns around the stabilizer, and generates lift, to yaw the aircraft in the roll direction. The lateral and directional stability, will come into effect. The flight computer's yaw damper software function, will use the rudder to ensure the aircraft does not enter a Dutch roll. If the aircraft is disturbed in the yaw axis, and the nose moves to the left, the right wing travels faster, and experiences a slight increase in airspeed. The left wing slows down, and experiences a slight decrease in airspeed. The difference in airspeed, increases the lift on the right wing compared to the left, and the aircraft will roll, in the direction of the yaw. The stability function, will return the aircraft to its original attitude. The fly-by-wire architecture of the 777 for roll control is similar to yaw control. The control wheels provide manual roll control. Aileron trim is used to move the control wheel, with the help of the trim actuator, and hold the control surfaces in that position. To return the control surfaces to neutral, the opposite trim input is required. The autopilot system when engaged, will send roll commands to the flight computer. The flight computer, will instruct the autopilot, to back drive the control wheel for pilot reference. When the flaps are extended, the ailerons, and flaperons droop. For roll control, this becomes the new neutral position of the control surfaces. Maximum control wheel movement, will result in full deflection. 
As the control wheel is centered, the control surfaces return to their droop position. The control wheel determines the roll rate of the aircraft. The flight computer moves the control surfaces in proportion to the control wheel displacement. Less control wheel movement will result in less deflection of the control surfaces. The roll of the aircraft will be slower. Maximum control wheel movement will result in full deflection of the control surfaces. The aircraft will roll faster. Aileron and spoiler lockout. Torque is the force applied by deflecting the control surface, multiplied by the distance from the center of gravity. The farther away the surface is from the center, the greater the torque. Therefore, the ailerons will provide a greater rolling moment than the flaperons. This is the benefit of having the ailerons close to the wing tip section. However, this creates a problem for high-speed flights on wide-body aircraft with a large wingspan. When the aircraft is in a low-speed configuration, the flight computer will use all the control surfaces to roll the aircraft. As the airspeed increases, the flight computer reduces aileron deflection and finally locks them out completely. Simultaneously, it also locks spoilers 5 and 10. Now the flaperons and the remaining spoilers are used for roll control. Let's understand why the ailerons are locked. In a right roll command, the downgoing aileron increases the lift and the upgoing aileron reduces the lift. Due to the high flexibility of the wing tip section, the aileron deflection has a tendency to twist the wing. The wing twist increases with airspeed. This reduces the angle of incidence of that section of the wing and reduces the lift rather than increasing it. At a certain airspeed, wing twist reaches a point where the lift on both wings is equal and the aircraft does not roll as commanded. If the airspeed increases further, the torsional load increases, the lift drops more than the opposite wing. At this airspeed, the aircraft rolls in the opposite direction. This is known as high-speed aileron reversal. To prevent high-speed reversal, the ailerons are locked by the flight computer. The spoiler deflection disrupts the airflow. When spoilers 5 and 10 are deflected at high speeds, they create turbulence that can engulf the aircraft's tail section. This causes severe buffeting of the tail. To prevent this, the flight computer locks the two spoilers. The aileron trim is used when the aircraft keeps rolling in one direction. One such situation is fuel imbalance. If the two wing tanks do not have the same quantity of fuel, the difference in weight will cause the aircraft to roll. If the autopilot is active, the rolling moment is automatically compensated and the wings are kept level. But in manual flight, the pilot has to compensate for the rolling effect. This requires constant opposite control wheel input, which will add to the pilot's workload. In such situations, the pilot can use the aileron trim function. The trim actuator will turn and hold the control wheel. The trim function will compensate and maintain the wings level. Roll control, mechanical backup. In a fly-by-wire system, flight computers control all surface deflection. In the unlikely event of a complete electrical system shutdown, the control surfaces will not operate, and the aircraft's roll control will be lost. To ensure some degree of roll control is still available in such situations, the control wheels are mechanically connected to spoilers 4 and 11. In a left roll, spoiler number 4 will deflect to reduce the lift on the left wing and roll the aircraft left. To roll the aircraft right, spoiler number 11 will reduce the lift on the right wing. The mechanical connection to the spoilers is a backup in case of electrical failure. The aircraft still needs hydraulic power to operate the spoilers. Bank angle protection. Control wheel movement deflects the control surfaces and the aircraft starts to bank. The aircraft continues to roll until the control wheel is returned to neutral. Now the bank angle has been established. To return the wings level, the opposite roll command is given. Excessive banking of the aircraft can be dangerous. If the aircraft is banked more than 35 degrees, the flight computer will use the back drive actuator to turn the control wheel in opposite direction and roll the aircraft back to 30 degrees. If the pilot wants a greater bank angle, then he has to apply more force on the control wheel to overcome the back drive actuator force. Once the desired bank angle is established, enough force has to be maintained to prevent the back drive actuator from turning the control wheel in the opposite direction. 
If the control wheel is released, the flight computer will roll the aircraft back to 30 degrees. The bank angle protection feature prevents inadvertent overbanking. Turn coordination. The aircraft is turned by using the control wheel, but two other factors have to be taken into consideration. The application of the rudder and the elevator. In straight and level flight, the drag on both wings is the same. When the control wheel is rotated left, due to aileron and flaperon deflection, parasite drag increases on both wings. On the right wing as the lift increases, the induced drag also increases. As a result, instead of yawing in the direction of the roll, the aircraft yaws in the opposite direction. This is known as adverse yaw, which causes the aircraft to slip into the turn. As the spoilers on the left wing deflect to augment roll control, they increase the drag and reduce the effect of the adverse yaw. But this does not completely eliminate the adverse yaw in all flight conditions, and the aircraft could still be slipping into the turn. Therefore, to coordinate the turn, the rudder has to be applied in the same direction. This is automatically done by the flight computer turn coordination software function. Once the bank angle is established, and the control wheel is returned to neutral, the adverse yaw is no longer effective. The flight computer will return the rudder to the neutral position. The second factor is the loss of altitude in a turn. When the aircraft is banked, since the vertical component of the lift is not equal to the weight, the aircraft will descend. To perform a level turn, the wing lift has to be increased by increasing the angle of attack. This is accomplished by using the elevator. On the 777, there is no need for the pilot to apply the column back pressure. The flight computer will automatically move the elevator to increase the angle of attack. This simplifies the turn. The pilot only has to move the control wheel. The flight computer takes care of the rudder and the elevator. When the opposite control wheel command is given to stop the turn, the flight computer will again apply the rudder in the roll direction. As the wings are leveled, the rudder and the elevator return to their neutral positions. In the final chapter of the flight control series, we will explore the pitch control features of the aircraft. Thanks for watching.